Greetings, fine friends. We welcome you to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. Our show today features excerpts of a lecture by Dr. Bruce Lipton, an internationally recognized authority from the United States on the connection between science and the spirit. Dr. Lipton is the author of several books, including The Biology of Belief, Unleashing the Power of Consciousness, Matter, and Miracles. By training, he is an expert in cell biology and is a former medical school professor and research scientist. His research work in the 1980s at the prestigious Stanford University, USA, showed that the outer layer or membrane of our cells is the equivalent of our brain. By processing information from the outside environment, the cell's brain can affect changes inside the cell. He has found scientific evidence demonstrating that our beliefs manifest themselves at the level of the cells in our bodies. Dr. Lipton says that by modifying these beliefs, we have the power to fundamentally change our lives for the better. Now we present part one of our program featuring portions from his fascinating talk entitled, Nature, Nurture, and the Power of Love, which concerns conscious parenting or how parents can set the best possible foundation for a child's future. It's your interaction in the environment that selects your gene programs. If you're in a very supporting, nurturing environment, you'll express functions of the system to promote growth. But if you're in a toxic, angry creating environment, an environment that conflicts with your life, you're gonna select different programs. Perceptions are also given a survival value. Each perception you see influences your life. And so there's a, a value when you learn about that perception, you give it a value of whether it's supporting your life or something that threatens your life. And that's very important because ever after that, when you see that perception again, you will automatically say, oh, I remember that threatened me. Or this was a great thing, I, I love that. And so what is loving or hating or fearing something? These are the values of the perception that you've acquired. You learn these perceptions. This is very important. What are the perception values? Well, basically, at the fundamental level, there are two values to perception. One, perceptions that provide for growth and reproduction. Things in your environment that nourish you, encourage you to thrive in the world, you give them a growth value to them. And you engage in behaviors of growth. Growth is opening up your arms and taking it in. Growth is things that are out there giving you sustenance and supporting your life. But you need other mechanisms of survival besides growth. You have to understand protection. They in involve different activities. Growth is encouraging the system to, to facilitate its own homeostatic balance. Protection, you don't go into protection like, hey, open your arms up. What do you do in protection? You close them down. Interesting, growth open, protection closed. Same thing, humans and cells. Anything that supports your growth, you will move toward it with open arms. You will go out and get it. And the most important growth factor for a human being is love. Love is what provides harmony to the system. Love is an energy that coordinates and makes the community a whole functioning system. Here Dr. Lipton analyzes the classic debate of nature versus nurture regarding what kind of personality traits a young one will possess when older. Hundreds of years, nature, nurture, nurture, nature, which is more important? I'll then tell you the truth. The answer, consciousness. Reason, consciousness can override anything you had in your nurture. Consciousness can even rewrite your genes. In fact, in cancer, that's probably one of the most likely situations involved. The reality is consciousness is more powerful than either nature or nurture because consciousness can rewrite both of those. And we never talk about it. And the important part is, we never talk about it. It's more important than what we do talk about. Even before a baby is born, he or she will gain information from the parents while still in the womb. Dr. Lipton suggests this information will influence how the baby will perceive and react to this world after birth. The fetus is getting the same signals across the placenta. So as the mother experiences something, the fetus experiences why? Same hormones cross the placenta, affect the embryo. It's not a bad plan. Reason? It's nature's head start program. 
What's going on in the world? Fetus can't see it. So what does the fetus do? Rely on what the mother experiences. And as the mother experiences, the fetus will adopt and adjust its physiology to respond to what she sees. So the parents collectively influence the mother's environment. It's the parents that are shaping the genetics and expression of this child by their perception. Please stay tuned for more from Dr. Bruce Lipton's lecture, Nature, Nurture, and the Power of Love, after these brief messages. You are watching Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality. Today we are featuring a talk entitled Nature, Nurture, and the Power of Love by Dr. Bruce Lipton, an expert on cell biology and an internationally recognized authority on the connection between science and the spirit. Eye contact and physical touching with their parents is crucial to a baby's psychological makeup and perception of the world when they become older. Without this bonding between a parent and child, behavioral issues can appear. What is important? Direct eye contact with the child. The reason is the child has a moment window. It's, at first, an infant can distinguish chimp faces from each other as individuals and can distinguish human faces as individuals. But a little later in development, just after a couple of weeks, it can't distinguish the individual difference between chimp faces. It can only distinguish the individual difference between human faces. It's beginning to narrow and focus it down on who is the parent. Reason why. The eye contact and also physical touching is most important, is required to create an attachment bonding. The relevance about it, as I said, the child learns perception. Well, who is it going to learn it from? The one it's attached to. That becomes the teacher. Both parents can be bonding with their child. Reason why, and this is so beautiful, the child is programmed very, very quickly to determine the facial expression of the parents. If the parents are smiling and happy, that means everything is fine. How many parents are actually observing their kids when they're learning things? Most of them are too busy doing other things. If the child turns around and the parent's not there, then what is going to gauge whether this is a good thing or a bad thing? It's lost. Now it's not very clear. It was designed to learn very quickly by observing the facial character of the parent what was going on. Now here's an important point. If the bonding doesn't occur, then the child will not focus on faces. Actually, we'll start to focus on mouths, more or less. This has been found in three-year-olds because that's the first time where you can judge autism. An autistic child does not look and recognize its own mother's face or its father's face from anybody else's face. It can't do it. When it looks at a face, all it looks at it sees a mouth. It doesn't even look at the face. Reason? It lost bonding. It doesn't know. One of the consequences of improper bonding is the child will express the characteristics of attention deficit disorder, meaning the child will not focus on anything in particular. It will just be scanning and will not focus on things. And why is this a problem? Because so much of this bonding hasn't occurred that so many children are expressing it. The problem is that we confuse it with attention deficit disorder. Those are two different things. And the problem is what then happens to these kids is, oh, this child has attention deficit disorder. Give it these drugs, you know, Ritalin or something like that. And the reality is now you've compounded the problem, made it worse. It wasn't attention deficit disorder. It was an attachment disorder that giving the drugs in no way affects this. Dr. Lipton discussed specifically what parents can do to help their children be the best they can be through focusing on what messages they are sending to the little ones. Until six years of age, a child is in a hypnotic state. Everything you say and do, it's learning, it's watching, it's observing. And until then, until six, at that point it begins to express its own consciousness, which can still make programs, but then it's involved with the program. Up till six is the most important period. The reason is this. This is the period of enculturation. This is the period where the child has to learn all of the details about language and movement and how to integrate in a society. This is the developmental period of learning how to be a part of a community. And why consciousness is not involved is it would distort the downloading of this information. 
So in this time period, the child is completely a tape recorder of all of the behavior it observes from the teachers called its parents. And all of a sudden, you start to recognize a very important problem that's going to happen here, and that is then you were also programmed between two and six to have behaviors. And you weren't consciously involved with your own programming. And these are fundamental programs. By the time a child is six, the parents could be gone. The, the child will still grow up just like the parents were. If the child has learned behaviors from nurture that are not good or the best for them, things can still be changed, as consciousness, in Dr. Lipton's opinion, is the most important factor. You can change any programming. Consciousness can override nurture any time, but you need to do it with a, pro a, a process. You just can't do it. It's a process of change. Educational resources and referrals. I want to provide you with two organizations that will give you all the referrals you need about changing programs, all of nature steps of conscious conception, conscious pregnancy, conscious parenting. These are the Association for Prenatal and Perinatal Psychology and Health, APA. This is the website, tremendous resources. And this one is called the Alliance for Transforming the Lives of Children, another website. You can download from these organizations details about the things that I talked about today, plus processes that can be used in creating a better relationship with your children, a better understanding of parenting. And in this process, the whole nature of it is very important for this reason. That is, how we parent our children is how they will parent their children. How we parent our children today changes the future of evolution on this planet. And therefore, our own children are the future parents. We would like to extend our appreciation to Dr. Bruce Lipton for providing his insights on child development and parenting, and for reminding us that above all, love is the most important element in life. Please join us again next week on Science and Spirituality, where we will present part two of our program featuring more highlights from Dr. Lipton's lecture. Thank you, our caring and intelligent viewers, for being with us today for our show. Now please stay tuned for Words of Wisdom next, after Noteworthy News, here on Supreme Master Television. May heaven bless the children all over the world with bright futures. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash is is.